today I'm going to show you how to select transparent objects very easily by using blend modes and also create a composite out of it with reflections and shadows. Before we go any further into this video, we have to understand that it's very difficult, if not impossible, to select transparent objects, especially when the background is busy. And why is that? Because the object itself may reflect the existing background, thus making it extremely difficult to change. So the background needs to be flat or contrasting. Also, the methods to select different types of transparent or translucent objects is different. Check out my previous video on selecting a translucent object, which was a veil of the bride. Today, we're going to do it with a glass on a white background. And for a black background, the steps are going to be very similar. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop CC 2018. Now, some of you are wondering, why am I not using the latest 2019? I just did a video about it. Why is that? Well, the 2019 has some bugs and a lot of you guys have reported the bugs to me. So unless the bugs get resolved, I'm going to stick to 2018 so that you don't face a problem because sometimes what's happening is, especially on Windows, on Mac, there are issues as well. But on Windows, the composites are looking a little different, especially there's a blend mode issue. Some people are seeing some lines and stuff. We'll solve that later. Let's hope Adobe solves that. But till then, we're going to use CC 2018. Now, the first thing we do is to have the background open. I'm going to make the background available for you to download. Check the links in the description for image downloads and stuff. So here we have the background. And on top of it, we need to drag and drop in the glass. So I'm just going to open up my Explorer or Finder and drag and drop it just over it. Now, let's adjust the size. You can hold Shift and the Alt together to make it bigger from the center, just like so. I'm gonna make it this big and place it rightly, in a right place. All right, now once the placement is done, we're gonna change the blend mode of this one to multiply. Now why multiply? Let's have a look. The background is white, right? Now what multiply blend mode does is that it just multiplies. Think of black as zero. And why is that? Because black is nothing. Black means no light right? So black is zero and think of white as one. Okay. Now, since the multiply blend mode multiplies, let's have a closer look at it. If I multiply one, which is white with some other number, what is going to be the result? The number itself, right? So if I multiply one into 47, it's going to be 47. So therefore, when you choose the blend mode multiply and you have white, white multiplies with that color and in result, you get exactly that color. In other words, white hides, right? It becomes that color because it's one and one multiplied by any color is the color itself. On the other hand, black is zero. So zero multiplied by any number is what? Even if it is 1 billion, 0 multiplied by 1 billion is 0. So, whenever there is black and you choose the multiply blend mode, it makes other stuff black as well because it is 0. So, let's go ahead and choose the blend mode multiply. There we go. The white background goes away because it becomes the background color. All right. This is looking all great, but the shine is gone. We want the shine. So, what do we do? But before the shine, there's a little less depth to it. So we're going to make a copy of this one. Select this, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Now, as you can see, it's very dark. We will decrease the opacity to somewhere around 40-ish. 40 is fine. Now let's make one more copy. And this is above the shine. Ctrl or Command J. Change the opacity to 100%. Now, what is the blend mode, which is the exact opposite of multiply? Because this time we want the shine. And that is screen. Keep in mind, screen is exact opposite of multiply. Multiply hides 100% white and shows 100% black. Screen, on the other hand, shows 100% white and hides 100% black. All right. So let's go ahead and choose screen. Screen brightens, multiply, darkens. Keep in mind. It has brought the shine, which is great, but it has also brightened some other areas that we didn't want. So we will take the help of blend if in this case. So all we need to do, double click on the right hand side of the layer. What if I take away the dark areas or relatively dark areas of this layer, which is the glass layer with the screen blend mode from this layer. So if we take this slider from the left to the right, as you can see, the dark areas are going away. 
keeping only the extreme bright areas, right? But it is very harsh and the background is not gone. Don't worry about the background. We're going to take care of that later. But this seems to be fine. Now it's very harsh. So we'll hold the Alt or Option. Click on in here to separate it and then separate just like so. Now, once you're satisfied, just hit OK over here. Right? Hit OK. Now, we need to take care of the background. For the background, we can always do this. We can turn off the background layer. We just have the class, right? We can use the magic wand tool. So select the magic wand tool. Keep in mind the tolerance is low. Right now, if I select it, it also selects the inside of the class. We don't want that to happen. Press Control or Command D to deselect that. Decrease the tolerance to zero and increase it just a little bit, one or two or three, something like that. And let's see if it selects it. Let's keep it at two. Okay, it does a pretty good selection. As you can see, it's beautiful. There are a couple of areas which needs uh, correction, like this area, but that's okay. It has selected the white areas. I also want to select the other areas outside of it as well. So I will hold the shift key. See the plus sign on top of it? Hold the shift key, click on the outside to select all of it. Now we have selected everything but the glass. It's just the opposite. So we need to invert the selection. Press Control Shift I, Command Shift I to invert the selection. And then simply click on the mask button. As you can see, the mask has been created. Now let's turn on the background. Perfect, right? Now it's very bright. We will decrease the opacity to somewhere around. Let's go for 72 is fine. Now we need to correct masks here and there. Simple. Take the brush and make sure the foreground color is black. Make the brush a little bigger. Let's make it a little bigger. You can press D to reset the swatches and you can always press X to toggle the foreground and the background color. With the foreground color black, just paint on these areas. The extras, all right? Let's zoom in. We need to be careful over here. Just a little careful. You can take your time to make as much accurate selections as you want. This is just a simple one. As you can see, there's a little bit left out over there. So we're going to change it to white by pressing X and then we're going to fill it just like so. Here a little bit is left out. Simply fill it. Easy. Easy peasy. Anything over here? I mean, you know that that's fine. That's natural. Yeah, everything else looks fine to me. All right. Now that we have done that, we have to just adjust it in a way so that it fits with the background. Now at this point, I would prefer to take a short break and then get back to the image because there are certain things that we don't notice as we are so engrossed in editing the image. Now that I took a break and now that I see it, I can see it's very dark on the outside. So we're going to select the glass copy and decrease the opacity even more. Maybe something like that and select the first one and just decrease the opacity a little bit. Something like this. See. It's looking so much more realistic at this point, right? Okay, so we need to make those decisions of taking little breaks. This looks to be fine. Now it's time for us to adjust the color. Select the topmost layer so that when we create a new layer or an adjustment layer, it creates on top of everything else, all right? So let's go ahead and create a solid color adjustment layer. Doesn't matter what the color is, just hit OK and change the blend mode to color. All right, now we want to limit the color just to the glass. Now keep in mind, since these glass layers are actively using blend modes, we cannot use a clipping mask over here. Even if we try by holding the Alt or Option, clicking in the line between these two, this just doesn't work, right? So we have to use masking. Hold the Alt or Option, click on this one to break the clipping mask or just don't make a clipping mask. All we need to do, hold the Alt or Option, drag this mask and drop it over this mask. All right, replace layer mask. Yes, we want to replace it, hit OK. So now it limits to just this class. Now you can double click here and choose any color you want. So make sure the sample size is five by five or 11 by 11, something like that. And then take a sample from the surroundings. For example, this one, this looks to be fine. Hit OK and decrease the opacity. It's very high. So let's go ahead and play with the opacity for this one. 50 is fine, I guess. We can always adjust it later. Let's go 45-ish. Now it's time for us to create the reflection. How do we do that? Well, select the background layer and make a copy of it. Press Control or Command J. Okay. Now, place the background layer on top. We need to keep in mind that the reflection on the bottom surface of the glass will be upside down. Let's have a look. So let's turn this off first. 
So the reflection over here, as you can see, since this area is reflecting this surface, it will be upside down. So what do we do? We turn this on, okay? And then control or command T, right click on it and flip vertical, just like so. And then, then just adjust it. And let's decrease the opacity so that we can see what's happening. 58, 57 is fine. We can always adjust that later. This position seems to be fine and we can just take it up a little bit. This is okay. Press control or command T and this is important. Right click on it and choose warp. Now this is the main thing over here. You need to bring in, in the shape of the glass, just like so. I'm gonna bring this point over here. Bring this point over here, just like so. And take these points so that they become something like this. You have to maintain the shape of the glass. See how the shape is maintained over here? Very carefully, just like so. Now, you wanna make it a little narrower so that it makes sense. Let's bring this point. Okay, that looks good. Let's try to bring this point even closer. Let's try to bring this point all as well closer, just like so. Now, we might have to make some adjustments over here. Now, it looks pretty good. Maybe we need to make it even more narrower. Okay, now once you're fine with this, just hit enter or return. Now to make it even more narrower and give it a shape, you better use Liquify. So go to filter and then Liquify. You could have converted it into a smart object, but that's not required in this case. Let's just zoom into this point. This is okay. We wanna see the background. So make sure you check show backdrop so that you can see what's going on over there, all right? You can choose use all layers mode in front. It's also gonna show you the previous position. See how nicely we're giving it a shape. You don't have to be very accurate here. Okay, now once you're satisfied, you can just hit okay. As you can see, it's perfect. Now we would need the same mask over here. So hold the Alt or Option, click and drag and drop it over here. Now as you can see, it's looking very good. Now we need to remove it from the highlights. And how can we do that? Simple, double click on the right hand side. We also need to remove it from the shadows as well. So, we need to remove it from the highlights of the underlying layer. In other words, we need to remove this reflection from the highlights of the layer which is underneath it. So, we will use this area, not the top one, the bottom slider. So, first of all, let's remove the darkness, also the highlights, we'll do it later. This one is fine. Let's break it apart. Hold the alter option, break it apart, and we're going to keep it this way. Let's remove the highlights. Hold the alt or option, break it apart. Let's keep it this way. Let's take it all the way to the left and this take this one all the way to the right. Hit OK. How does this look? Let's increase the opacity now. Wow, this looks so much more natural. Now have a look at the reflection before, after, before, after. So much more natural. Now we don't want any reflection here at the bottom. So we will simply go ahead and select the mask, take a brush, make it big and soft with the foreground color black, just dab at the bottom with the opacity and flow at 100. Just dab at the bottom, just like so. And here we have a mild reflection like that. Now it's time for us to create a nice shadow for this one. The light is very diffused, so there won't be a hard shadow, very soft shadow. Even a little bit of shadow is already in there. So you don't have to work so much hard for the shadow. Let's select the background layer because we wanna create a shadow above the background layer and below all of these classes. So let's create a new layer and then simply take the brush, black is the foreground color, and then you can make the brush the size of this bottom side. I don't know what to call it, the base, just click once like that. That's all you need to do. Then press Control or Command T and adjust it according to the shadow that you want. You, if you wanna make it bigger, you can, or smaller, you can. That's absolutely upon you. I'm gonna place it right over here. Maybe I'll just increase the length a little bit. Something like this is fine for me. Maybe a little bigger from there. Just play with it. All right? 
Now we are satisfied with this. Now once you're okay, just simply decrease the opacity. That's all that we need to do. 48 or 40 is fine. Now at this point, I want to adjust it a little bit. Okay. All right. Now, if you want, you can also change the color of the shadow. So we will create a solid color adjustment layer and choose any color. Doesn't matter now. Hit okay. And then hold the alt or option. Click on the line between these two. This limits the shadow, limits the color to the shadow. And then you can change the color to whatever you want. So I'm going to select something like this color over there and then make it darker. Select B. B stands for brightness. I'm going to select B and just to make it darker. And maybe increase the saturation so that see the color has a little shadow has a little tint. Okay, that looks so much more realistic than just the black. So there you go. That's how to do it. I just spent a little more time with this and here is the final result. So that's how to remove white backgrounds from transparent objects. Now, if you're up for a challenge, removing black backgrounds follows very similar steps, but things are a little reversed. So if you want to try it, tweak it, I give you a challenge, try it and let me know, tag me and probably I'll create a tutorial about it. So meanwhile, just a quick little recap. First of all, we opened the background. We started with the background, right? Then we brought in the glass and placed it and changed the blend mode to multiply. Why? Because multiply darkens. It would hide the white and show the blacks, all right? Then we made one more copy just for refining it a little bit and then we brought in one more copy and changed the blend mode to screen because screen brightens. We wanted the shine. But when we changed the blend mode to screen, the background showed up because the background was white as well. So we used the mask and blend if to remove excess of the brightness or bright areas. Once we do all of this, we need to adjust it to the background. And to adjust it, first of all, we adjusted the color. We created a solid color adjustment layer, changed the blend mode to color and used mask to limit it just to the glass. You can also increase or decrease the opacity later. And after that, we created a reflection. We turned it upside down. We made a copy of the background and then used warp to confirm it to the glass and then used liquify to even refine it more, All right? And just with the normal blend mode opacity and we used blend if to remove the highlight areas and the dark areas just to make it so much more natural. Also at the end, we simply used a brush to create a simple shadow and we added a little color to it. Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.